Hi, everyone. Thank you for sticking around. Um, I would like to thank Exposure for having me here again tonight. And I'm really excited to talk to you for the next 10 minutes, hopefully, um, about the work that I've been doing for my PhD. So the title of my presentation today is Comparative Gut Hormone and Gut Bacteria Changes in Patients with Type 2 Diabetes Undergoing Sleeve Gastrectomy or Ruin Y Gastric Bypass. Or in other words, what happens in our gut following bariatric surgery? Bariatric surgery is currently the recommended treatment for the treatment of type 2 diabetes and obesity. There are many different types of bariatric surgery available today. Uh, the two most commonly performed surgeries in New Zealand and worldwide are the Rue and Y gastric bypass and the sleeve gastrectomy. These procedures are typically performed in about 45 to 49% of each of all, of all procedures. Both of these procedures result in really significant rates of weight loss, sometimes up to 75% excess weight, and also really, really exciting levels of type 2 diabetes remission. So we see roughly 71 to 72% diabetes remission in both of these types of surgery. And so really what we want to understand is how does the gut physiology differ between people who do remit and people who don't? So why is there this 30% who don't remit despite surgery type? So apart from um, the basic anatomical rearrangements to the gut, we believe that there are two other mechanisms that contribute to this type 2 diabetes resolution. They are changes to gut hormones and changes to the gut bacteria or the bacteria that resides in our gut. So as far as the gut hormones, we already understand that any changes to the stomach or the gut, any anatomical rearrangements, is undoubtedly going to have an effect on the hormones, proteins, and small molecules that are produced in or active in those areas. And so this is fairly well understood with bariatric surgery. Something less well understood is changes to the gut bacteria. There have been 14 small studies to date looking at changes to gut bacteria following bariatric surgery. There are a couple of common themes emerging, including things like an increased diversity or richness of the bacteria in the gut following surgery, and also a couple of phyla, genera, and species-specific changes. But based on these studies, they're looking at different surgery types, different cohorts, different disease states, and at different lengths of study period. And so it's really hard to understand whether any of these changes are truly causal or truly contributing to type 2 diabetes uh, resolution. And so this is what we want to do. We want to see if we can pull out something that can be used to have a look at why people do and don't remit from, uh, from type 2 diabetes. So the first thing that we set out to do was first compare and confirm whether these two types of surgery have similar remission rates. This is what we expect would happen uh, based on the literature, but we wanted to confirm in a, in a single cohort. Secondly, we wanted to have a look at whether this similarity is further re reflected in similarity uh, to how patients adjust to glucose control and then further their gut bacteria. Do these things look similar between the two types of surgery or are they different? And then finally, touching on that final point is, can we find something, can we pull something out that's going to help us have a look at people who do and don't remit and why this happens? So in 2011, we embarked on a patient assessor blinded trial. So we were looking at the treatment of the bypass versus the sleeve for the management of diabetes in obese patients. So obese patients were, with type 2 diabetes, di diabetes excuse me, were recruited. They were put on a very low calorie Optifast diet for two to four weeks pre prior to surgery. And then they were randomized to surgery. We saw these patients at two days before surgery, one year after surgery, and we're now seeing them at five years after surgery. At all of these appointments, they had a myriad of body composition data taken, including heights and weights. They also had an oral glucose tolerance test, which I'll touch on in a minute, and they gave a fecal sample for microbial DNA analysis. So firstly, I just want to touch on my first two aims, which were confirming that these diabetes remission rates are similar and how glucose control looks following surgery. And so what we see in a nutshell with diabetes remission is we see it, it is similar. There's no difference between the two types of surgery, and it's also quite clearly, if not maybe a little bit better, reflecting what we had seen in the literature. So at one year following surgery, we're seeing 72 to 75% of our patients remitting from diabetes. What about glucose control? So this data was obtained from the oral glucose tolerance test. 
At time zero, our participants are given 75 grams of glucose in a drink, and then we take bloods for two hours following that. A couple of key things here. The green is representing the bypass group, and the blue is representing the sleeve. These two little red lines are indicating thresholds that are telling us um, about the glucose control of the participant. So typically, patients with diabetes will have a fasting glucose or a basal glucose level before eating of over seven millimole. We also see that after two hours of a, of a glucose drink, their glucose is sitting much higher than 11.1. So these are key indicators of inadequate glucose control, and this is what we see in our participants pre-surgery. So what about following surgery? This is what we see. So the first thing to point out is that all of our participants are sitting below seven millimole at fasting, which is great. We're also seeing that at the two hour mark, they're sitting below 11.1 millimole. So this is representing the adequate glucose control. So it, glucose control has been restored. The really exciting thing here is this insulin. So what we see is the insulin is rushing in following the glucose drink. It says, quick, quick, get out of here, glucose. So it sends the glucose to different organs, different tissues, and gets it out of the blood, which is why you see that the glucose is significantly reduced at two hours um, in the following surgery in the, in the bold lines. And so this is, this is exciting. This is telling us that, yes, we do see this glucose restoration, but we already knew that. We knew this from the literature. We just wanted to see whether the groups are the same, and they are. So what about the gut microbiota? Specifically, does, do the changes to, are there changes to the gut microbiota? Do they look the same between surgery types? And is there a difference between patients who do and don't remit? And so this graph is all of our participants who did remit from diabetes following each surgery type. So this is the 70% roughly of our patients. On the left, you can see the bypass. On the right, you have the sleeve group. And although you probably can't read all of the words, what you can see is that there are different changes. So the red bars are indicating increased bacterial taxa. So this is either a specific species or a, a family or something, something specific that's coming out. Green is representing a decrease. And you can see that the two surgery types are both having increases and decreases, but they're a bit different. But what's really exciting is this Roseburia intestinalis. So this is a specific species or group of species that is significantly increased in patients who do remit from diabetes, regardless of surgery type. So we thought, this is great, this is interesting. What about participants who don't remit from diabetes? Which brings me to this graph. So it's the same graph. Red is an increase, green is a decrease. And this is everybody who didn't remit from diabetes as a group. We don't see any Roseburia increasing. In fact, what we see is a decrease in Roseburia species following surgery. So this is interesting. This is something that's starkly different between the groups. And so we wanted to know what is Roseburia. Roseburia is a butyrate producing bacterium. It's typical in a healthy gut. So people who have looked at healthy guts have seen a lot of Roseburia. We know that it is associated with weight loss and improved glucose tolerance. And we also know that it has other beneficial um, roles in the body, such as influencing colonic motility. And so what we want to, what we want to do now is take this, this change in Roseburia, this difference in Roseburia that we've observed, and see whether it relates back to any of our other clinical indices that we have, or can we even use Roseburia as a probiotic for these patients, pre, post, or during surgery. So in a nutshell, probiotics are live bacterium that taken at large doses infer health benefits. Typically, they include things like bifidobacterium and lactobacillus, um, which are known to impart various different health, health benefits, such as producing vitamins for the body and regulating levels of other bacterium. So can we use Roseburia? Is there, the, is there somewhere that we can slot Roseburia into this? And it turns out there's a lot of hype about this already. So there are several patents filed that are looking at the use of Roseburia for the treatment of obesity and its associated diseases. So this is exciting. So to wrap it all up, is diabetes remission similar? Yes. Is the similarity also reflected in changes to glucose control? Yes. What about the gut bacteria? We saw some discordant changes, but really, really excitingly, we saw this Roseburia coming up. And specifically, we saw it coming out in patients who did remit from diabetes regardless of surgery type, 
but not in patients who didn't. So I just want to wrap up and thank everybody who has participated, especially my, especially my patients. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.